Hello, today we're going to talk about lifestyle and non-communicable diseases. And you'll remember possibly from a previous video that when we talk about non-communicable diseases, these are things like heart disease or cancer or something like maybe even type 2 diabetes. And these are all diseases that are non-communicable, which means they cannot be caught by standing near someone who has these diseases or they're not caused or caught by an infection. However, there are factors that can increase the chance of getting these diseases, and we call those risk factors. And what those risk factors do is increase the chances of getting a non-communicable disease. Important to remember is increasing chances and not definitely getting it. So what do we mean by risk factors? Well, lifestyle is one of them. So that's whether you smoke or drink or poor diet and things like that. And also the presence of substances in the body or in the environment. These can also be risk factors for things like cancer. So substances in the body or in the environment. These are two key risk factors for non-communicable diseases. In terms of our risk factors, some have what we call causal mechanisms. So some risk factors have causal mechanisms. Be careful how you spell causal. You could end up spending, uh, spelling casual, but it's not casual, it's causal. And we're going to look at what that means over the course of the next few minutes. Now, what we often do when we're looking at causal mechanisms is we look for also the correlation between variables or correlation between factors. We look for correlation and for causal mechanisms. Now, just to have a look at an example, we can look at this graph here. This is called a scatter graph. A scatter graph and what we do is we have one factor along the bottom along the x-axis and, and another factor on the y-axis so we could for example have the idea of hours of revision hours revising versus average exam grade and what you might say is that between those two we have a positive correlation the more hours spent revising the higher the average grade so we could draw a line like that and we could call it a positive correlation between those two factors positive correlation now we could have another scenario where we have two factors and in the second scatter graph here you can see the points are plotted all over the place and there seems to be not much of a correlation so imagine we could have something like I don't know hours fishing on a Sunday afternoon versus millimeters of rain something like that and you can see from that data there there's actually no correlation. You could spend many hours fishing and have a lot of rain or a little bit of rain or vice versa. So there's no correlation between those two factors. Another example is where we have a negative correlation. So this could be something like hours spent sleeping versus the amount of work done. And we could describe this as a negative correlation that's being lazy, I should write the whole word out. That minus sign with a VE stands for negative, but you understand what I mean? We've got a negative correlation there, and you might say that if you spend a lot of hours sleeping, you're going to get less work done. Okay, now, that doesn't necessarily mean hours sleeping is linked to the amount of work done, and we can illustrate that idea a little bit better by looking at something like this. So here we have a scatter graph, and we're looking at the number of sweets eaten per day and the number of fillings somebody might have. And we can see quite clearly from that graph, we have a positive correlation between the two. But what we also have for this information is what we call a mechanism. So we have a positive correlation plus a mechanism. And by mechanism, we mean a way in which this, this factor of eating number of sweets or eating lots of sweets might cause more fillings and that mechanism is that we know bacteria eat the sugar in the sweets when they eat the sugar they produce a waste product which is an acid and acid damages the enamel on teeth and that can cause holes and cavities and therefore requiring fillings so here we have a mechanism and we have a positive correlation and we have some data from a large number of people or we could we would need a data from a large number of people now have a look at this second scatter graph we've got hours of t uh, hours of watching tv per day and the number of people overweight now that might seem like common sense if you spend a lot of hours watching tv every day you might 
end up being overweight, but what actually is the mechanism? That almost looks like watching TV causes people to be overweight, and that's actually not quite the case. The act of watching the TV won't make you overweight. There might be another factor. So this actually is not necessarily causal. Watching TV won't necessarily make you overweight, but there might be another factor that is involved here. So for example, if you're watching a lot of hours of TV, maybe seven, eight hours a day down this end, it might be that the person doing that eats more food. Or it might be they have certain foods they eat when they're watching TV and that might be junk food with high calories causing overweight. Or it might even be that because they're watching so much TV, they're not exercising and that could be a factor. So it makes more sense to say lack of exercise causes overweight rather than watching TV. So you have to be careful when you're looking at these scatter graphs and looking for correlation. What we do have though, is a lot of information about the risk factors listed on the screen there. There's a lot of information and we have causal mechanisms for all of these risk factors. So diet, smoking and exercise is linked to cardiovascular disease. And we have to be careful, we're not talking about doing exercise, we're talking about lack of exercise. And in fact, in terms of diet, we're talking about having a poor diet so these are risk factors with causal mechanisms and there's a whole bunch more there. So obesity is linked with type two diabetes, alcohol with liver and brain function, smoking with lung disease and cancer. We've got smoking and alcohol linked with problems with unborn babies, not causing unborn babies. And carcinogens and cancer, as we said, a carcinogen is a chemical that can cause mutations in DNA. And those mutations can lead to cancer. So that's what a carcinogen is. And we have a causal relationship between carcinogens and cancer. One quite interesting one to look at is this idea of smoking. And there were varying views of the idea of smoking linked with cancer. But what has happened over time is there's been lots of surveys, lots of data over a long period of time with a lot of people. Not only do we have that data, but we also have causal mechanisms. So there have been experiments done looking at the effect of chemicals found in cigarette smoke and their effect on living cells. So we often talk about smoking increasing the chances of lung disease and lung cancer. Remember this is all about increasing chances not actually causing. So we can't say alcohol definitely causes liver problems. We say there's an increased chance and all of these risk factors increase the chances of those non-communicable diseases. So there we go, a summary of non-communicable diseases and risk factors associated with them.